Well, I am wrapped up like the Michelin man because for some stupid reason I've decided to come out for a few hours and try and catch. I'm just going to fish bomb and bread. Well, that's the plan anyway. Bomb bread, bomb and wafters, that sort of thing. Cast it around trying to find some fish. If I can catch three fish, I think that's mission accomplished. I'm going to try and catch five, but three, well, our fish is, is mission number one. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. But uh, yeah, two hours, I think, on the bomb. That's more than enough for a madman like me to uh, scratch that itch. But yeah, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I'm at Fritwell Pools, or Lodge Farm Fishery, some people call it. So um, we'll give it a go. The wind's a bit naughty. The wind's a little bit sort of, um, I was hoping we'd find a sheltered spot, but we're not, we're gonna have it side on. But we'll chuck around and see if we can find a carp stack. That's the plan. Wish me luck. The two short trips and we're, uh, we're there. Looks like the old tractors have been doing some work. <laughs> it was all brambly when I came here in the summer, but they've chopped it all down, thankfully. It needed it, and it's looking uh, all together nicer now. But this is the lake we're gonna fish. You see the barns in the background, so it's a working farm. And uh, yeah, let's give it a go. There's one spot here where it just goes down, a little cut out. We'll try and drop ourselves down there try and get out the wind is it's definitely clear but uh, this is where this sort of middle area here is where I saw a couple of fish roll when I fished the opposite bank I just caught roach on the opposite bank but I did see two carp roll in the middle here so uh, that's where we're gonna go my only thought is they could be up here back of the wind they could be here so uh, but I'm gonna start off where I've seen them in the past we can quickly move. I've got hardly any gear with me, just a box and a rod bag and a bag, a bag of bits. So we can always move if we don't, if we don't see any. But whenever I've walked round, this is kind of where I've seen some holding. So I don't know if there's a deep hole. Never fish this side. Only ever fish twice over there. That's it. We'll give this a go here. I mean, this, this is all I've got gear-wise. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. I plan to get my umbrella um, side on, but actually sat down there it's it's um it's not too bad at all so let's uh let's leave it at that and uh set, uh, set one of these rods up oh the handles just fell off <laughs> um yeah I'm set up i'm just gonna fish a trusty nine foot bomb beautiful commercial tool don't be led to th think it's just for small fish catch some really big fish with this so uh these rod straps by the way are absolutely brilliant just just once you use them you think right why well, haven't ever used those before so uh better than having three bands or whatever i still tend to put one in the middle just to keep everything trapped up there so uh, anyway, I've got a little 3000 XR, EFOS XR reel, six pound XD mono, which is 020. I'll write it on there, do you see? And uh, yeah, we'll be up and running in, in no time. Make sure it's on properly. And this is, uh, should have the one ounce tip in. I don't use any other size tip on this rod. Just, just stick to the one ounce. Any bite you get should be a rip round, but the softer the tip, the better. I'm going to set it up. At the moment, I've, I've, I was maggot feeder fishing on here, so I've just got a running swivel. I'm probably going to fish a little inline bomb, I think. I think that's what we'll do. We'll be up and running in no time, anyway. There we are. Not a lot of stuff at all. A little bit of a small platform for a big box like this. So, uh, let's have a look. I'm going to pop that there. I've got to be mindful, there's a lot of brambles and stuff, and you can see there's a lot of brambles around the margins and stuff, and I dare say there's quite a few sunken in here. And once they've done all the trimming, it tends to happen, doesn't it? So, uh, but uh, yeah, let's see, let's set, set some up quick. Just a very quick inline bomb, I think. I've got a little tub in my drawer with bombs, inline ones somewhere. Should be that one. There we are. That's me in line bomb box, all the little matrix in line bombs, and uh, I'm gonna put the seven and a half gram on, I think. Yeah, just go for the in between size if in doubt. Nice small little plop, 
That's seven and a half grams, the one I use the most. And then uh, watch me drop that in. <laughs> Leave it on the edge. Yeah, we just thread that on. Just comes in uh, two parts. You can slide it off the stem and put a different size on, easy enough. We won't be clipping up or anything today, we're just casting it around. Some angry little carp in here, well, big carp as well. So, uh, you just got to be uh, mindful of there's some big old kippers in here and they pull a bit, a lot of commons. I actually don't think I've ever caught a mirror carp in my two visits. We'll quickly thread that on. So it's only down the road for me, but I just, just never fish it. I came in the summer and it was too overgrown for me to do what I wanted. But now they've trimmed it all back, it looks nice again. So uh, we we'll just thread that on. I'm just going to do it in a little loop. I'm just going to go through three times. A triple overhand loop. You could do it in a little figure of eight. But I always find a loop's better than any other sort of knot for these beads and things. And that's, that knot's going to be tucked away anyway. Let's just trim that little tag in. Trim it. I don't mind leaving a female tag. I think it's important to leave a tag because that's the fish aren't going to be inspecting that. There we are. So that's on. So you can see the knot there. But that bomb's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's got a bit of wind on it. Uh, if it was flat calm, I'd go with a five gram, but that's seven and a half. All over. Chuck it through the middle of that that gap there. I can chuck it all over there, and I can hoof it up, up that way as well if I need to. So that's all we're going to be using anyway. And then we we'll just pop our hook length on there, and we're good to go. Let's get some bread. I have got some old big size Warburtons. Uh, oh no, that's that's medium size. Um, that's my, that's my older thick slice. Um, I prefer thick slice Warburton's. The co-op had no bread when I went at the weekend. No bread. I was shocked. Let's go on down the old co-op. If we're stuck as well, I've got some, uh, I'll call it Mr. Patel stuff, Rappy Shopper or whatever that is. But, uh, that's not not the best stuff, but we can use that. That's all they've got in the co-op. I'm um, sorry, in the in the other garage I tried. So uh, let's get a hook length on and take it from there. I'm going to fish a 14. So we are, we've just got a 12 inch tail for now. 14 and a super stop. 020 to a 14. Right, I'm keen to just chuck this out, punch some bread and chuck it out. And then we'll, we'll get our side tray sorted. Time's of the essence. So, I'm going to punch out three discs. And I'm going to leave them like that. Rather than go one, two, three all together, because it does compress it slightly, at least by punching them individually, they're more likely to be popped up. In fact, that has got some moisture, so that's not so bad. I, I was a bit worried that those slices were, would be dry, but they're, they're okay. So, we've just got our needle. Tell you what, I'm gonna have to set my landing it up before I cast this out. <laughs> that is so much of a rush. It's only the first thing I set up. So anyway, three discs, that's all ready to go. It's all ready. Let's get the landing net set up. <laughs> I just bought my uh, EPOS one because my other one's in my pole case, so uh, just all this, this will do, it's a lovely handle, it's two piece. And now I use the, um, I love this super light ne ne mesh net, oh, I don't have anything trouble with things, get hairs or anything get stuck, but I just think it's great for scooping fish, especially if you foul up some or need to, you know, be really quick at scooping. It's good for that, and you'll get anything in that size, that's the uh, medium size. So there we are. We are ready. Let's chop this out. I'm going to chop it. Just right in front there to begin with. There, just there. <laughs> 
There's no rhyme or reason really, that's just where I, it's like playing battleships. Farmer's doing a bit of scraping. Yeah, I class this as battleships. So we've just got to find the coordinates. I've been playing battleships with my daughter, she's loving it. So, uh, she cheats a bit, but uh, <laughs> she has been enjoying playing battleships. F7, yeah, you've just sunk my aircraft carrier. Nice wind on it anyway, so that sunk the line straight away anyway. This XD line sinks really well. I might point it down a bit more because we're really high up here. And we are high up, aren't we? Looking at the conditions and the time of day, if I can catch three, jobs are good. And I've even brought two flasks today. We'll give that eight or nine minutes, see if we get a bite on it. They could be in one big ball up the top. That's the problem. But I just want to see if we get some liners. Let's get the rest of our bits out. I've got some wafters I can chuck around as well if I feel that's necessary. Sometimes a wafter's better. I think most people have seen my arrangement. I, uh, I just have a tub. I've even got some six mil pellets I could fire. That's how I keep my bread, like that. Leave my needle in my punch in, that's eight mil, eight mil compression punch. And that's it, I just keep it like that. It stops the elements getting to it. And now we wait. I oh, actually I'm not I'm not as cold as I thought I would be. Big uh, evergreens behind me so that's why I came as well because I thought it might give me a bit of shelter as long as we're getting liners I'll be happy I'm gonna chuck between the islands and then we'll work our way left and right of the island I am impatient. I should go, leave it in for 10 to 12 minutes, maybe, but I think we've, I think a little lake like this we can search around a lot more, and if we're near one, we should catch one quicker. <laughs> Let's go between those two islands now. Yeah. I'm just trying to think where's most out of the wind, and between the two, there's going to be a bit of a, a lee. Yeah. I've probably just, I've literally split the two islands. We'll see if we get any liners. And if we do, we can come back until they stop. <laughs> or if it just goes round, happy day. I'm fishing it as slack as I, I dare. The wind's going to take it up a little bit anyway. And, uh, oh, I can see the bottom here. Cool, that is clear. Yeah, I can actually see the bottom now, the sun's the sun's changed. Wow, that is clear. On the right day, you'd probably see the fish. But we've had such a massive temperature drop. It's uh, tough, tough conditions now. Proper winter bingo time. So, uh, eyes down, look in. Let's hope for a full house. <laughs> Peg, 10... Carp den. Two fat carp, 88. One little duck, leave my bread alone. <laughs> yeah, all the while I'm just looking around, keeping an eye on the tip as much as I can, but you've got to you've got to look for signs of fish. Simple as that. And if you see see a fish, you've got to chuck to it. As long as it's in your peg. And not in your neighbours. So I've got the whole lake to myself. I can chuck it wherever I chuck it where I want. <laughs> there could be 300 carp in the space of like a three metre square. <laughs> I've seen it. You wouldn't believe how tightly they'll show when it's like this. All huddling, huddling up together for warmth. So they could be off the back of this little island. We'll definitely have a chuck up there. But it's definitely battleships this. So uh, you just got to try and be strategic, but keep casting around. 
give it I'm gonna give it eight minute cast. It's such a small shallow lake that I don't think I need to leave it in for 15 minutes just yet. But I'm not gonna change my setup in any way at the moment. We haven't found the fish yet, simple as that. And I reckon every fish in the lake is gonna be in a ball somewhere. But if we can find that ball, happy days. But we ain't found it yet on our second cast. See, there's a big stump there. It's the only big tree on the island, so it could be a little bit undercut there. We we'll, we'll chuck towards it. <laughs> I'm not clipping up or anything. I, I, I've just chucked probably two foot short of it. If there's any wind here, I wouldn't hesitate to chuck the 10 gram. But I definitely think that's seven and a half grams, so just a nice size. So, yeah, I'll address it a little bit some more side on. I tend to just want a little bit of an angle. The liners, that's what we want. Well, we want fish, but liners is the next best thing. Might get my Polaroids out and have a little walk around the lake. If it was less windy, I think we'd see them. <laughs> potentially or a, an area of coloured water perhaps where they've all ganged up but yeah that looks a nice spot where we've chucked it there anyway I'm just gonna fan my fan out I'm just trying to lay out the uh, the trip wire the lines like a trip wire as much as it is a, a trap <laughs> Trip wires and traps, but this uh, this is this sort of fishing. It's um, stealthy hunting, you know, trying to anticipate where where they're gonna be. You've got to use it's, it's watercraft. There's a bit of luck involved as well, obviously, and uh, yeah, you just gotta be a bit patient and um, methodical about it all as well. I think. Right then, before we go any further, I want you all to answer me this dilemma. Which would you go for? A Freddo <laughs> or a Green and Blacks? Posh chocolate or kiddie chocolate? It's going to be the kiddie chocolate, isn't it, eh? But, what if there were two Green and Blacks? Mm? What, what would you do? Two Green and Blacks or one Freddo? Chuck that way now, level with the, the little island where those two little branches are on the island. Gone that way. You know, it's cold when the old soup's coming out. I uh, haven't had any lunch yet. Bottoms up. No liners anywhere yet. What you want? Just real nice slow liners that tells you there's some carp in the area. Little plucks are generally ropes pecking at it. I contemplate going on the other lake because I know that's deeper, but that was really getting the wind bad. I think we've just been a bit unlucky the way the wind's blowing today. I'll give that another two minutes. I've just checked it down there. It's so clear I can actually see the bottom. So I've just been dragging it around just to make sure it stays on. And that's staying on lovely. Let's just see. Now it's all soaked up. See if it comes off still. I can see it. I'm dragging it, twitching it. Big twitch, big twitch. It's all still on. Okay, I've been twitching and twitching and it's still on. And the other thing I sometimes do, I'll just show you. I just go through the crust bit there if you really want to make sure it's popped up put a bit of crust on with it as well I've always done it it's always been quite good for me a bit of crust so obviously the most important part of the bread oh so it's definitely sharp so we've got three discs there I know they're popped up so I've just checked it 
chuck that out. Just basically into the that left hand corner. We're running out of uh, obvious spots. And it's just a case of uh, being a bit more thorough retracing the steps. I think based on how shallow the lake is, we're just going to chop it down to about 8 to 10 inch. I just think the lake's a bit too shallow to do uh, Nearly lost my scissors. Yeah. Yeah, I think the lake's a bit too shallow to be popping it too high off the bottom. I still think a foot's not, but if it's three foot deep, popping it off a foot's not a problem. But, uh, well, we've not had any, we've had an hour and we haven't had any, as so much as a sign. So let's not go quite so high because it is very clear. And I've gone down to the smaller punch as well just to try just try everything today it's all sorts of things you know I can't I don't want to do one thing all day if that one thing is potentially not as good as another thing the three three bits I'm not convinced this is going to pop up but it's just going to be a nice swollen bit of bread on the bottom so uh yeah we haven't we took we haven't chucked it that way yet so let's go right up there Well, I'm back to the fishiest looking spot again now, which I think is a couple of metres short of the island. Probably an hour and a half now. Probably had about 10 casts. That sounds about right. Definitely, it's definitely suddenly feeling a bit more pleasant. So come on, come on, baby. Show me where you are. We've got a liner. It just went whoop and stayed there for a little bit. Just had a liner there. <laughs> Come on then. Come on then. There we are. Got it. We got one. <laughs> Thank God for that. Good fish. <laughs> we got one. So. I've actually gone shorter with a tail and put three six mil discs of bread on. Don't know if it made a difference or not, but it's a smaller venue, you know, relatively small cart we're after. Oh yeah, oh, a big plume of mud came up with him. Look at him, that's how shallow it is. You can see all the mud. Gotcha. Lovely. So we have not blanked and I can still see the bread. Look. Oh, he's a long lean thing. Very long and lean. I'm just going to roll up my knee and print the sleeve. I don't want them unnecessarily. But yeah, you can still see the bread. <laughs> Result. Well, no word of a lie. I was starting to question my sanity. There you are. You can see all that. Not the prettiest of carp, but very welcome. And a sight for sore eyes. Get all that off. Hook that up. Let's make the most of this fish. We might not see another. <laughs> God, it's a block of ice. Not. Oh, <laughs> the bread just went flying out. But there you are. He's a wriggly, wriggly mofo. But we've cast all the way around. I did say it just looked all together nice. All of a sudden, the wind dropping. I'm not sure he's going to let me. It's like an eel. Very cold, Ian Beal. Yeah, he's a bit empty that one. No wonder he wanted a feed. <laughs> it slipped your back, mate. Whew, we caught. Oh. Do you know what? I've got a towel, but it's in the van. Let's go back and get a towel. <laughs> and we'll have another cast. You have to break open the emergency. Brand new towel. <laughs> and after going all the way around, pretty much exhausting everywhere, I've chucked it back where just where it looked fishiest really. Two or three metres short of that island. 
Oh, it's nice to catch that fish, but by heck it were cold. It's just gone Baltic the last two or three days. We've had all that rain, all that mild weather and wind and 10 degrees. We've been spoilt really. And now it's gone proper, proper wintry. And it won't be, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get some ice on the lakes the next day or two. It's just, we've got a bit of wind as well. It's keeping it off, I think. It's been really windy the last two nights. Else I think this lake would have been frozen with the temperature. Big frost on the uh, windscreen this morning anyway. But we've had one. Let's see if we can get a couple more now. We've not blanked, that's the main thing. It's half the battle in winter. Now on this method you do get, the bites are weird. It's not like a method feeder where it just goes round or drops back. You sometimes get a lot of shaky bites. You think, is that on? And quite often it is. So location, that's, that's the battle. You could have the best rig in the world, but if you ain't chucking it in the right spot, it don't make no difference, does it? Say so location, location. Well, I'll tell you what, whilst, whilst we're waiting for that, I'm just going to pay out a bit of line. A couple of metres. And just clip it up for when we do chuck it tighter. Quite a scrawny carp that one, wasn't it? I've come here, I, I did um, paste um, paste down the edge here. And it, it can be rigid with carp this place, but they were all, they all had a belly on them. That one certainly didn't. As long as they're not squeezed together, they'll pop up. But there's a time when you might want them squeezed. So that's when I'll go like that. I'll do three. Put your finger on the end, press it. And then you come out with a nice sort of compressed pellet, like that. So they're all compressed. That can be lovely. Yeah, we had that last one on, on three six mils, but I'm going to just try eight. If we don't go by it, we'll go back to six. I just think eights are more visible and more buoyant. Go out a bit more next chunk. Down there. Just creeping a bit closer to the island now. I think it's really shallow against that island, so I'm not convinced they're against it, but they might be. I say I've just chucked it a foot from the island. That we're in 30 seconds. <laughs> foot from the island. I just went crept and crept near that stump and it's just shot round. I don't know why I, I felt they'd be a two or three meters short and a big ball, but clearly not. That was in not long at all. Better looking fish. Not a monster. But a much prettier fish. That was not in long at all. Let's bring you back. That's two. Can we get our third? With that size fish, it makes sense that the smaller, the smaller six mil punch is better. Most places, I, I seem to be fishing the eight mil a lot, but there we are, we're ready to go. That was not in long at all. To really punch that then. The 
yeah, they're quite small carp they are. They're, I know there's, there's bigger ones because I've, you know, I've had eight pound carp and everything out of here. So, uh, another liner. Just a slow... I'm quite keen to chuck a wafter over there as well. So if we can get three on this, I'm going to chuck a wafter on and try and get a fourth. It's exciting once you find them. But as soon as you've got one, and got a liner or two, your whole mood changes. Just about to change my battery because it's one percent. This is a bigger fish. I'm going to change the battery quick and then carry on. That's a nice fish, much nicer fish. That camera's gone to my right. <laughs> this one went halfway through the fight. size I was expecting more. Five pound. Middle of the bottom lip. Cracker. Let's change the battery quick and show it you on the other camera I think. Bit of a kerfuffle with my camera batteries. Sod's law. But that's the stamp I was expecting today or hoping for. So we had two little ones and a nice big one all on the bread. Absolute block of ice. Oh, it's slipping back. Ooh. It was worth coming after all. <laughs> so we've had three. Oh, move my cameras round. Let's try and catch a fourth on the bread first. Depending how fast that comes, we'll, I want to try a wafter, maybe. So this is a six mil compression punch. That's what we've had them on. It's been quite nice. Pop them there. Ooh. Cup of tea and a Freddo, I think. As soon as this goes out. About a foot to the left of that stump, that was. 22 metres, I'm going to guess. Yeah, now the sun's out and the wind's dropped. I can see the bottom two metres there. We're going to have one. But I'm going to have a quick, a quick brew. Bomb and bread is such a weird one. In many ways, I hate the method. It's great when you're on them, and it's crap and mind-numbing when you're not. It's it's a lovely, lovely way of catching, but only if you're on the fish, because you're not making anything happen. That's the bit that annoys me. You're just casting it into spots. You you know, there's things to tweak, the hook length lengths, and how you compressing it and popping it up, and all that sorts of things. There's loads of little nuances. But the main thing is being on some fish. If you ain't on those fish, you've just got no confidence in the method, which is why I've come out today, because it's it's a key winter tactic. So if you can get your confidence levels up on a session like this, it makes all the difference when you're in a match. Avoiding a blank was target number one. Catch three fish was target number two. And now I'd just like to catch five, or then we can go and warm up. Oh, he's swam towards me. Is he on? Oh. <laughs> Kept tightening up and it wasn't tightening up. Mm. I reckon that was, that was swimming towards me. <laughs> that's right against us. Weren't paying attention, but that's literally four or five inches from the from that stump. This is my uh, mission. If I can catch five, I can have my Freddo. 
That's the mission. I've had my green and blacks anyway. I burnt those today, just coming out. Another liner. Like I, said, I, reckon, I reckon we need to come back a little bit. We might catch one there, but even so, I still think next cast we come back at. Look at that. Real slow. Let's just stay in there. That's not on. Let's go a little bit shorter. Yeah, I'm going to go my metre short of that stuff now. We got one on the way. Oh, tell you what, I reckon we went over a fish back then. We have found the hot spot. So I've chucked it probably three metres shorter now. I don't really want to be cheese wiring through a ball of carp because I just think you're going to scare them off. But there's definitely a ball of carp somewhere between where I've chucked and that stump. I think I was too tight on that last chuck and it had gone over a fish's back. I'm really keen to chuck a bomb and a wafter. I do think a wafter is really good, it's really resilient, especially if there's roach about and it's something completely different a nice bright one we took pink one i think took a six mil six mil pink i've had quite a lot of success chucking, chucking wafter it says eight mil on there but it's uh i've got a mixture of sizes i just mix them all up into one so if we don't get any signs on this we know to go another meter Sun's blind me a little bit coming through those trees every now and again. Let's get a different hook length ready for a wafter. We go. Sixteen to O eighteen and a little band. Oh no, we might have a we might have a one with a pin on actually. Have we got any with a pin on? Yeah we have. Oh yeah. No, we use that sixteen with a pin. It's a 16 MXC3 and it's just got a bait spike. See that? So we can spike it. And it will just pivot nicely. A nice fluoro pink one. I always think fluoro, fluoro pink is a brilliant, aren't they, when it's cold and clear. And uh, it's a nice bright colour fish can see and inspect. There we are, fluoro pink but six mil band. Let's try that. First we want to catch another one on this. Yeah, that's exactly where I wanted it. I'm gonna say I'm a meter and a half short of the uh, of that stump now. See if we get any liners on this. And obviously we're creeping towards the time of day now when you should be getting bites anyway. So many venues I know, you can sit there for four hours and not get a bite and then everyone catches in the last hour and you know this is this is no different. Something to do with light levels, warmth, time of day, I don't know what it is, but carp generally feed later in the day. You've got to incentivise yourself though, so that Freddo is going, come on, catch a carp because you I want you to eat me. I could see the bread on it then, it just came off as I, as I brought it in. So it wasn't that. Let's swap the hook length. Got the old wafter on it. Just make sure it's in there. Since so many people think it's clipped in and it hasn't. Yeah, look, it's definitely in. Slightly to the left as well, I think. So uh, it's got its uh, pros and cons. Yeah, I don't think you can beat bread really for the softness and fluffiness and just the sheer um, attractiveness of bread. They love it, don't they? But uh, I know no end of places where a wafter is brilliant if you just chuck it around. 
especially if it's somewhere that's got a lot of uh, roach and skimmers that you think might be pecking at it all the time. So I've just chucked it. I've gone to. I never had a bite that way, so I've just gone a couple of feet to the left of where I last cast. But this is a 16 MXC3, um, 016, or maybe 12 inch long, 30 centimetres. And uh, I've, I've got a 10 pound note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're struggling. Yeah. Well, you've done a bit of bank clearance yesterday along here. Oh, yeah, I saw the tracks of that. I said you've been yeah. doing some of it. But there was still trees along there. Right, right. So you've gone about taking these, taking four conifers out here. Oh, okay. He wants to, he wants to be able to get the digger along here. Yeah. And a trailer, and dig out the sludge. Oh uh, yeah, because it's so yeah. shallow, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, very silted Even up. Dig it by the margins. It yeah, is. it's really silted up. It's dug in, it's dug out in the seventies, and it's never been desilted. Right, right. Is that how old it is? Is it? Wow. Well, I set my target at three. Yeah. <laughs> I should have gone. I wouldn't have had to pay a day ticket then. Been here long, then? No, twelve. Uh, about twenty past twelve. I started. Oh, okay, yeah. right, cheers. Thank you. cheers. No worries. Catch you later. Well, two meters this way now. It's interesting though. I've been talking to the uh, the guy who's just took my day ticket. And he, he says there's carp up to £17 in this lake and it's not been desilted since the 70s well it's, it's, it's never been desilted and it says it's as old as the 70s so it's 50 years old <laughs> but they are going to desilt it by the sound of it which is uh, sounds good to me they've done a load of work here so they can get the digger in oh, put the hood back up now if we don't get any bites, we'll pop the bread back on as well. Oh, there's a liner. Yeah. So they had gone that way. Yeah, two metres that way I went, and uh, first cast, and it's gone round. That weren't in long with it. Nice bite as well. Yeah, that first fish was pretty, pretty scraggy looking, wasn't it? But the other three have been uh, lovely. I always think that's a good sign. Anyway, middle of the bottom lip. Right, perfectly up middle of the bottom lip. Mint, mint fish. Get your back. I'll warm my hands up. Oh. Now just check there's no slime or anything on that. Just check it pivots nicely still. Which it does. Chuck it back in. So what are we on? Number four. Yeah. That was not in long at all. Just shows what you can catch without without feeding anything. I think if I came here in a match, I would probably ping some pellets. So I'd probably ping towards the gap there, and I'd just cast around there and uh, see if they wanted the feed or no feed. But today it was purely about bomb fishing, bomb and bread, bomb and wafter. Look. Doing anything. Ooh, now then, this feels a nicer fish. Bigger fish, leaner. What's on the 
hell we're after. Oh, he's in the scissors, that one. Oh, I think we're after. Not bad. I'm not going to touch that one. He's a little bit empty. But I'd say he's probably three and a half, four pounds. Chuck a, a yellow one. What's that? I oh, know I've got five. <laughs> I'll ask the six now. I'll we'll try a yellow after this time. Just had two on the pink. Got a line straight away. Straight away. <laughs> Go on, stay on. He's an angrier one. found them now. That was not in long at all. We've not fed a thing. Just wrap round it. Cracker. See that wafter again? Back. <laughs> Corner, number seven, then we'll go. So, what I've deduced anyway is uh, a meter from the island. Come back two meters, they're not there, they're a meter back. They don't mind taking a single up, mate. But yeah, they're definitely from that stump to that point. <laughs> and everywhere else I chucked to begin with, no signs whatsoever. It's quicker as well, that wafter. If you're on fish, it's much, much quicker. Yeah, that's the 16 MXC3. It's quite a small 16. It's just a nice little, just wafts around, almost neutral. I, my thinking is they suck it in nice and easily and because it's on a bait spike it pivots nicely and can set the hook really nice it just makes it harder for them to deal with you can fish it on a band but I think at this time of year stack all the odds in your favour and a bit of movement between the hook bait and the hook just helps the hook sort of catch the fish's mouth a bit more it's all rigid all going in together I think sometimes they can suck it in and blow it out a bit easier and do you. But there's loads of things we could come we could come back and try a big hook, you know, a size 12 or a 10 hook. See if that's better or worse. But definitely where I've been going lately, I just feel little hooks is quite a good thing. But you've got two superstars out there, Steve Ringer who thinks the bigger the better and then you've got Andy Findlay who thinks the smaller the better and um, they're equally as good as each other at this game so run line feeder fishing bomb fishing so uh, you know it's what you're confident with but here we've seen that first fish I had a tiniest little hole for a mouth we wouldn't have caught him on a 10 off would we Come on, let's see if we can get number seven and that's more than enough to uh, satisfy my craving to come out in the depths of winter and catch a fish for the camera. Absolutely bonkers, ain't I? <laughs> got a little bit of sun, it's just about a drop as well. We haven't, we haven't got much more sun anyway, poking through those trees. Right, I'm gonna have another cast. 
And so the fish we've had, we haven't waited long, have we? So there's no point waiting 10, 12 minutes for a bite. We've not been waiting that long for one. Let's chuck a bit more to the right. That's the one. That's the one. If we get this, I've deserved my Freddo. That one was not swimming up, was he? Moving towards me. Be interested to see if this is in the mouth because it was such a weird bite. So that's winter bomb fishing, you get weird bites. Oh, he is in the mouth. Decent fish as well to end on. Yeah. Nice quick one. <laughs> He came in pretty quick, didn't they? There's a wafter in his golf, if you didn't believe me. Brilliant. Bottom lip, nice and easy. There we go. That's it. I am not catching any more. As much as I'd like to stop on in some ways. Let's, uh, let's quit whilst we're ahead. He looks a bit feisty. Try and hold him up. There we are. Happy days. <laughs> Block of ice. Slip your back. Cup of tea. There we are. Bomb and wafter anyway. Bomb and bread. Nice and easy. Seven fish. Depths of winter. Baltic day. No other idiots here today. Just me. But there are fish to be caught if you can find them. There we are. Bread battleships. I'm going to have my thread out. <laughs> See you again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. And also check out my members area where there's well over 70 films. Just $2.99 a month for extra films going up at least two a month for going up at the moment and um yeah there's loads of content and also just look at my back catalogue you won't believe the amount of films you've probably missed on anything you can think of canals lakes rivers all sorts of things sessions matches little tips and tricks how to's you name it there's loads of stuff on my channel so keep liking keep subscribing keep supporting me and i'll keep giving you nice content to watch i'll catch you again on the bank